Fair down, Bears fans. We are here yet again, unfortunately, with a common theme. After a loss, the Chicago Bears moved to two and six after getting their butts handed to them on the national stage yet again. I am so sick and tired of apologizing to America for uh, having to watch this dumpster fire that we call our team. Uh, Lance, how are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> you know? Had had better days, just like our Bears. Yeah, yeah. It seems it seems to be a theme with this season here, and uh, a lot of things that we thought were going to change just they just haven't. I mean, let's let's start off here. Where, where's your? By the way, like the video, subscribe to the page, leave that five star review. Stop playing with us, man. Y'all be on game sometimes. Uh, what's your biggest issue with this loss? Where's where's the thing that really you look at and you're like, if I'm in that locker room. That's the first thing I'd change. Uh, penalties, you know, penalties. Uh, they're they're very controllable. They're, they're they're the one thing that you have a lot of control over. You know, there are effort, there are bang bang penalties, and there are just knucklehead penalties. You know, and there were three in the first quarter um, that you know, and and and, and this is not a t- you have to play clean. This team has to play clean to have a chance. Yeah, you know that that's the talent level that we're that they're at. So that's the first thing that 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 uh, I had a problem with. Uh, <clears throat> then we shift to defense, and we talk about uh, missed opportunities. All right, number one, we can't we don't we we couldn't get to the ball to the quarterback. All right, and um, every time we got close to him, he evaded it, created more time, and um, um, got it out to his ball carriers. <clears throat> Uh, and then when we did have the opportunities to make plays, we didn't make the tackles. You know, missed tackles was a big thing in this game for this defense this week. That was the thing was missed tackles because this uh, San Diego offense, they what they did was they took what was given. So there was a lot of dink and dunk all the yeah. way down the field. And, you you know, and that's really what you want defensively. You want them to throw the short pass. You break up and you make you get them, get them down. And you get off the field. But if you don't miss the tackles, those short those short passes turn into 40 yard touchdowns, 20 yard gains, 10 yard first downs, moving the chains. That's the problem. Lance, no, I just I gotta ask because I feel like over the last three weeks we saw better technique. Is there a situation? Do you think that this could be a situation where I know a lot of times in the NBA when you play a better team that just punches you in the mouth, you revert to the things that you did as a bad team, right? So like with the Bulls, they were a very one-on-one team. When when a good team would come in, they'd be like, we got to do what we do best. Try and just score the basketball. Is this the technique thing that's showing up here? Because first the Raiders, there was gang tackling. There was wrapping guys up. They were tackling with proper technique. And in this game, it was just like, throw your body out there as hard as you can to see if you can knock them over. I, I thought I was watching Madden out there. Well, you can do that. You can do exactly what you're talking about right there. You can throw your body out and go as fast as you can if the other 10 guys are running to the ball. Yeah. Now, if the other 10 guys aren't running to the ball, then you look, you're you going to get exposed then, you know, because they get paid too and they're very good. Um, I actually, that that's 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 a technique that, that, that I imply on. You know what I mean? You should run as hard as you can. You should take your shot. Take your shot to your leverage side. The other 10 guys are going to make you right. Uh, <clears throat> um but, and 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 it was a game where you know the missed tackles they it stood out yeah that, that it stood out you know and that's the that's the that's the theme of it you know and and you look at you know people talk about uh, um, Justin Herbert being a a that's an elite quarterback all right well that's an elite quarterback against against uh, no pass rush okay now <laughs> you 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 take that same elite quarterback all right against the pass rush that he's had the rest of this year and. They're 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 a subpar team with a bunch of talent, a bunch of the elite talent, a bunch of the generational can't miss talent. Okay, so you know the 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 the, the name of the name of the game is if you can't get to the quarterback, if you can't protect them, what good is this? What good do these elite talents, these generational picks? What, what, what good are they? Yeah, no, he, he's Justin Herbert is is. <sighs> I don't know what to call he, You know what he is? And tell me if you see this. I, I've said this a couple of times. Tell me what you see if you see this. Doesn't he just seem like long-haired Phillip Rivers? Like a guy that's good enough to keep you in the game, but in the fourth quarter, 
That turnover's probably coming near the goal line on a game-winning drive that may be going the other way. You're okay, so you're talking you're talking last few years Philip Rivers because most of Philip Rivers' career he was on the money and he was driving, he was taking those the San Diego Chargers with the usually the league's best record or arguably best record to the playoffs, and then they get picked by the Patriots on a year. I was going to say, though, now, but the Patriots, he he would do that same thing with the Patriots, too. (laughs) But they were a machine over there. You know what I mean? They were a machine, and he was, you know, between him, LaDainian, LaDainian, and and whoever else they had out there. uh, Yeah. You know, so they, I, I, I thought they were a machine for a long time. No, they was, they, they had a, they had a elite squad, but I feel like that was the, like, those moments stood out so much in Phillip Rivers' career because <laughs> now granted, you're right. It would be in the playoffs versus the Patriots. Maybe <laughs> comparing Justin Herbert to that is a little disrespectful because Justin Herbert's only moment in the playoffs is a complete second half collapse. Correct. Yeah, I mean, like, and and that's not all on him, but uh, his team had a second half collapse. But it, it just feels like when I see Justin Herbert, I'm like, man, like. There's always a chance with this dude. They keep, I, I want to say you're an elite quarterback, but I feel like you're an elite quarterback for the first three quarters. And mm-hmm. I've seen how many times in the fourth quarter you give it up. I believe he leads the league in uh, right now when uh, fourth quarter interceptions still. So. There's, a, there's a lot of talent, you know, on that team. Um, yeah. So, so I, you know, a lot of individual talent. You know, I, don't, I just don't. And when you see that and you don't see success, that means that they're not playing well as a team. Mm. So you know, what I mean, so I, I don't know where the where the where the uh, uh, the falter in leadership, you know, whether it be in coaching or in that locker room. But um, but you guys, you have to look around that locker room and understand that you guys, we have something here. Let's go out and let's work hard and let's take let's let's go out and take this, but with the talent we have. I do want to let you guys know today's episode is brought to you by the Hard Rock Casino in Northern Indiana. You can see comedy legend Jay Leno at Hard Rock Live Saturday, November 11. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. All right, let's jump into the conversation that everybody wants to have here, Lance. And you've been, uh, you, I, I died laughing when I saw your tweet when you added Alex. It's like you got some explaining to do. <laughs> Tyson Bajan's play last night. I didn't think that Bajan played poorly. I thought Bajan played like a D2 rookie who's a backup. Yeah, I mean, like I didn't think that he played bad. I actually thought, you know, he moved the offense well. I thought Collinsworth was going a little hard trying to like hype yeah. him up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like I think I think he loves the underdog story. But uh, what would you see last night from Tyson Bajan? Did it sway you one way or another on the starter conversation? It didn't sway me. I didn't. It didn't change. I mean, my my thought, my opinion was my opinion from the yeah. beginning. You know, um, I I didn't think he played bad. I didn't. I really didn't. I just, you know, it 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 was it didn't work out. Yeah. You know, I, I thought there were opportunities. You know, what I mean, where he put the ball where it needed to be. You know, and then there were places where he made bad decisions. You know, and, and this this is what is going to happen. Yeah. You know, and and uh, um, I don't think it, it didn't change my opinion of Tyson. I think he's still a good quarterback. I think he's still somebody that you should continue to develop, you know, here in this organization. Um, <clears throat> but never did I think that he was the second coming of our great quarterback here in Chicago. I didn't you know, that's. And wouldn't I wouldn't that be the first coming at this point. I believe that's the first coming. I don't know if we've had on it. All. Right. Right. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right about that. Shoot, you're right. man. <laughs> but I, I didn't want to, but also didn't want that kind of pressure to be on him. Right. Oh, so, you know what I mean? You, it, it's, it's you're, you're coming in to spell a, uh, the quarterback that's been hurt. All right. We get to get an opportunity to see who you are. And if this is, if the stage is too big for you, I don't think the stage is too big for him, you know, but you know, it, it, it just allow him time to develop into the guy that he can be, you know, it, don't yeah. throw him out, throw him in and say, all right, go be him right now because you're the guy. You played great last week. You're going to lead us to a championship. That's too much pressure, yeah. you know what I mean, on this guy. You know, just come in and play some football. Well, and, and I now I just want to know if people are finally willing to have the conversation. I did a watch party over on the Breeze last night, and the first thing I said when I saw, you know, some of the struggles that popped up for Tyson was, I don't look at this as Tyson's issue. He started off three of these drives. In third and 16, heck, the first drive, we got two back-to-back penalties on our starting center. Can we finally start having the conversation where the conversation needed to be this entire season? Yes, both of these guys have their flaws, 
But when you're starting off drives in third and or, or second and 20, there's no play call for this. Correct. Right. And it's, you know, and, and there were times where, you know, he patted the ball in the in the uh, in the pocket and then he would roll out or he would evade rush, you know, what I mean, to create more time. Yeah, there's, you know, and, and the reality is there's not a whole lot of difference between what you what you what he had to uh, endure as opposed to what Justin Fields had to endure. You know, they're enduring the same type of situations. Yeah, and, and it just it, it shows you that this is a process that other pieces need to be added to. And listen, they, I think now, you know, we've got a good sample size that we can look back on some of the things that Ryan Poles has added to this team. And the, the number one for me right now is you went out and got Javon Dexter, who maybe is going to become a player, but isn't creating that pocket pressure as of yet. And you drafted him ahead of John Michael Schmitz, who looks like he could be a generational level center, and you need a center badly. Yeah, but you 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 you, you go back on 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 that decision, the decision that was made. All right, yeah. the first round, you 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 went right offense. tackle. Yeah, you went offense when you know that we're 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 dry at defense. Okay, yeah. you're dry on both, and I agree with him going with an offensive player on that. You know, at Darno Wright, hundred percent. You know, but. We there if if we pass if we pass up if we get that center and we pass up on the best available D tackle, you know at that time what I mean we're we're we're, we're we could be up up a craps creek with no paddle, you know what I mean <laughs> decisions have to be made and, and yes we wanted him that, that, that three play, players back but we are so dry at defensive tackle that yeah. we have to take in the and the drop off now in the second round that drop off for D D uh, tackles was oh, speed. it's quick. It's, you know, so just the right decision was made. We missed out on that center, on that yeah. center, yes, but there will be opportunities to get more. And if we don't go for the glamorous pick and we and we study and Brian Poles is an offensive lineman, ex offensive lineman, he this this should be an area of strength for him. You know? I think that the the only question comes in where now you come into this year, next year, right, and you're like. I mean, what are we going third round probably for center? Maybe fourth? Like I haven't seen a I haven't seen a college center that I'm like, oh my God, this guy's a first round pick. Like I don't want to see us take one in the first round. No, no, not at all. But there's yeah. there's plenty out there. There's plenty of good centers. I can tell you yeah. that. There's plenty of good centers, Pat. And what you have to do is you have to look at how, you know, I mean, where you have yours ranked. Where you have right. yours ranked. And as they start coming off the board, what pick do we have when we believe they'll start coming off the board? And if we have a chance to get uh, you know, there's probably two names floating up, two of my top names floating up. Once one goes, then we when's our next pick? Yeah. All right. All right. My, if we can if we can get to seven picks from now, you know we'll get our center. We'll get the center that we want. One of the two was fine. Either one is, is we're happy with. You Man, know. Let's hope we see it. I I love Joe Alt. To me, Joe Alt is our first round pick right now. Like maybe if you could get Notre enough. Dame. That's a Notre Dame guy. Notre Dame guy. Notre Dame guy. Right. What I feel like? I feel like I, Joe Alt. Uh, Olu is the other one out of. Uh, is is Alt the tackle or guard? Alt is the the left tackle. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. I feel like he like I I like Olu. Olu is um, uh, I don't I ain't gonna actually even pretend like I know how to say his full name. Uh, <laughs> but mm -mm. I feel like Olu has a lot of the same issues with the bull rush that Braxton Jones does, mm -hmm. and I don't want to go draft a player that has the same issues as the player that I currently have at left tackle. Mm -mm. So for me, when I'm looking at the line, I see Joe Alt. He's a finished product to me. I think that he's, you know, I, 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 I hesitate we to say pro-ready with him. everybody. I, hate, I hesitate to say pro-ready with everybody because when you say pro-ready, then you see him in the pros, you be like, oh, it's a different game, I bet. But he looks like he could be the left tackle version of Darnell Wright to me. I'd love to, I'd love to have it. Yeah, you know, what I mean, I would love to have that. We, get, you know, what I mean, we, maybe we get, we, we somehow get Tevin Jenkins re-signed. You know, what I mean, he's been a bear. He's been injured. You know, we get him for a discounted rate, and you know, we have Nate Davis. You know, what I mean, and then we go get our 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 center in the future in the third round, right around that 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 pitch. Yeah. All right, we are scary next yeah. year. So then, you know, and it go. This goes to you know. I don't know if if if, if Jess is going to be here or not, but whatever quarterback you put back there, if we stay healthy, offensive line, we're successful. We're gonna we will find success with our run game. Everything, come on, 
you know, even but that even goes to last night though. There were multiple play, and it, it, it irritates me that Getsy just was like, "Well, we can't run the football because it's the Los Angeles Chargers, so there's nothing to do. We can't run it. I don't know what to do." Like when you saw them call run plays to the right, Darnell Wright and Tevin Jenkins were like a snowplow moving people forward. <laughs> like I just I. The game plan to me last night, I don't have as big of an issue as I did in the Minnesota game or in the first three games with the game plan I saw last night. But there's just too many inconsistencies and there's too quick of a, well, it didn't work, so let's never do that again. When that's what the team's identity should be based on the rookie QB you had in there last night, which is running the football. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, just, you know, it's... Uh... It, it's unfortunate that we commit to the run for so many weeks and then all of a sudden fall off. And it's not like the, the Chargers pulled away, you know, through the whole game. Like it wasn't like we were playing uh, behind 21 points all game. We were playing yeah. behind a, a touchdown or two touchdowns most of the game. You yeah. know, that that opens the door to more run uh, uh, to opening your offense up, continue to run the ball balanced. Yeah. I, I, and I, it felt like, and this is the issue that I've had with coaching all year is it felt like in that moment, a lack of leadership. They got scared. Uh Oh, we're down two touchdowns. We can't, we have to get back in this right now. And then you have a three and out mm -hmm. because you're, you're trying to manufacture yards quickly. And those plays don't end up working out a little bit of a issue with the center. Again, your players kind of put you in a bad position, but yeah. then after that you have the interception. Yeah, yeah. So now you're compounding mistakes sure. with yeah, mistakes. I'm sure the penalties come into play, you know. Yeah. Having penalty on the first down, moving you back, and, and, and it just – it's it's a pain in the butt, man. But that's also, like, you know, the penalties to me it, it is, is – it's a it's a player issue, but it's also a coach issue. That's, yeah. a, that's a combine deal, you know. And, um, and, and if it's happening in the game, then we're not addressing it enough in practice. The one thing I will give Tyson Bajer credit for uh, with how he ran the offense was uh, that young man gets the ball out fast. He's he's a quick decision maker. I, I actually like uh, his pocket presence a ton uh, when you see him back there. Even for how little he's played NFL-level football, he looks very comfortable back there. Was there anything from Tyson's game to me or to you that uh, you want to see Justin maybe adapt? He's gotten a chance to watch it for two games that you want to see Justin kind of, oh, okay, I kind of like how you did that. Let me add that into my game. Anything that I want him to adapt to his game? Yeah. Um, I mean, he's so young, man. He's young. It's, you know, uh, there was a time where, you know, first round quarterbacks were brought in and they were, they were uh, uh, developed and groomed before they put out, they, they were put out to, to play. Yeah. You know, and, and now you bring these quarterbacks in and you throw them right into the fire and you say, you know, sink or swim. And for a lot of these guys that are coming from colleges, you know, you play sink. colleges, there's 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 superior talented talent versus inferior talent all across the 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 the, the country. You have power five, and there's even differences within the power fives, you know. So then you get into the NFL where it's it's all evenly talented across the board, you know what I mean? And even then you have the elite guys. So it's it, these windows that these quarterbacks are asked to to uh, read and react to in these in these split seconds, you know, some of them it, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to develop that kind of skill, you know. And even though you've been playing it all your life, it, it you know. And so what I've seen from him is from from Bajan is he's 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 uh, he's very poised in the pocket. He doesn't he doesn't uh, he doesn't rattle easy. He doesn't hit the panic button. You know, I think that's one of the one of the uh, Cree and Geet ingredients for a uh, a a good quarterback or the makings of a good quarterback in the NFL. You know, he also has uh, he's that's what he's been known for in, yeah. in college. In college, he's one of those quarterbacks that was able to he got the ball out faster than anybody else. You know, it and, and it shows when you uh, when you turn on a tape here. I I don't know if I've seen a quarterback throw the ball as fast as he did Yo. out to uh, DJ Moore. <laughs> That he he threw. They had a, uh, I think it was on the game last night. He got rid of the ball in point three seconds. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what the heck is that? Like, what's that's that like, a hot, like it's like playing hot potato. <laughs> that it's scares potato. me because right, yeah. The only thing that scares me about that is right, like it opens you up to making or 
if your receiver's not ready for that decision that you've already made, fire him. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> there's that. We might be are doing we, some we, of that. Are too. we talking? Pro, are we talking <laughs> professional ranks? If your receiver's not ready. Huh? No, no, this ain't how you play football. Hey, we might we might be making that decision with a couple of guys too. I'm just, yeah, man, it is what it like is. If you're a professional receiver and you're not ready for for a football, shoot, he got to go. <laughs> we got rid of one already. I mean, he's in mm -hmm. Miami now. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I I actually I I thought that there were some things for me that Tyson Beja did that were really well, and I would like to see Justin just the poise, right? Like uh, to me. Somebody said this on my show over on The Breeze, and it's the best way that I feel like I've seen Tyson's, the difference in Tyson's game to Justin's game. They said when Tyson's on the field, his playmakers are the best players on the field. When Justin's on the field, he's the best player on the field, and it shows in their mentality. Meaning that, like, when things break down, Justin's like, I, I'll save us. Versus Tyson, who kind of drops back, and he's like, All right, who's going to save this play right now? And he'll try to get it to DJ quick. He'll try to get it to Darnell quick. Or, or uh, um, we saw a ton of times underneath to Cole Komet. I think Cole Komet got seven targets yesterday. But I thought that that was very telling about kind of the difference and what the difference in what they've been asked to do, right? Last year, Justin was asked, like, please, Justin, we have nothing else. Just run. Just run. Just run. It, it's, you know, it, as far as, I mean, I, I saw Justin develop last year, you know, but to me, you know, including last year, with what's happening this year record-wise record is, is, is it doesn't make sense to me, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, there, yes, there are things that they do a little bit differently. Beige is going to evade the pocket a lot faster than Justin, because Justin believes that he doesn't need to evade it as that fast. I can evade it. I can hold, I can wait a few more, uh, a few milliseconds uh, more and still evade this pocket um, if I need to. You know, uh, it's just, and, and that's that men mentality wise, that's that's really kind of what I see, you know, in those pockets. He, Bajan will evade it really quick. And it looks like a very smart move, which it is because he's creating more time. Um, Justin's just having more time in the pocket because if, if any, everything breaks down, if everybody gets a hand on me, I'll break through these hands and I'll get, I'll get free. Yeah. My, my favorite thing is, and unfortunately it comes on the play, but it, it, when you hear the radio call, you know, we played a couple times on the radio from when Justin got hurt. It's like, you just hear Thayer go, throw it! <laughs> Which is, I love Thayer. He's my favorite person. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, he just, he's, in, he's in the booth being a Bears fan. Like, oh, yeah. like, he's, like, he's, like, he's, not, he's not giving you the Michaels. And he's, he's amazing on the call. But there are those moments that break through where he's like, no, I, I want a Super Bowl for this franchise. I want to see this franchise win. Like I'm tired Absolutely. of sitting here and seeing the same crap and just throw it. Like that is that is the thing for Absolutely. me with Justin, where it's like sometimes those moments get a little bit too long for him. Yeah. Where with Tyson, no doubt, those moments don't exist, and I can see why. But I think that's the thing, right? That's the part where you want to have the conversation on having a good quarterback with a good backup quarterback and how they can make each other better. I mean, like we saw uh, when Jay had. Um, Oh, uh, why Josh McCown, right? Yeah. Josh McCown came in and was like, stop doing these things. Jay listens sometimes. But there were things that Josh did that I saw Jay kind of adapt throughout the season. I was like, oh, maybe he helped it make him a little bit better. Now they didn't stick around. They didn't stick no. around. I, 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 but was, but there were moments. The th th there were yeah. moments. Yeah. <laughs> the Lance face whenever I bring up Jay. It's just <laughs> Hey man, listen, man. I got no problem with Jay. That's y'all boy, man. That's y'all QB, man. He he. I was I was watching him just the other day, just like man, he really picked a fight one on one with a DB and lost four times. That's crazy. Ah, uh, but no. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> I really was watching this game like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, reliving, reliving moments. I, I I live for this, uh, Lance. This is this is the team that I live, breathe, and die with. Uh, I gotta. I, before we uh, get to some of the other things that we have on the docket today, I got a little bit of a hot take here, Lance, because the good thing about the Bears playing at seven fifteen is that I get to watch the rest of the NFL. Okay. I said this on the radio last night, but it was two o'clock in the morning, so nobody probably heard it. <laughs> I got. Now I'm I'm and with it when it comes to NBA stuff, I'm a junkie, right? Like 
I probably already watched a hundred hours of basketball. And we're four game four days into the season. Like I've watched so many games. I'm I gotta rewatch the LeBron Sacramento game. I heard Kings, that, that Kings was elite. won in overtime, baby. Did, did yes, they? Yes, okay. Yes, I gotta yes, I heard that that yes, was elite yes, last yes, night. Yes, yeah, yes, I mean, uh oh, not the yes, dance. Yes, not yes, the yes, dance. Uh oh. Yes, uh oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you do that after the after the pick six? I saw that. I've seen that before. That was good. <laughs> oh yeah. But mm -hmm. no, um, I I love the NBA on that level. And it's been elite. But I watched so much NFL yesterday. There were 15 games. I probably watched all 15 because I have four screens going here. I have red zone going here. So I got to see a little bit of everything right. And it was horrible football. <laughs> what, you, what do you mean? What do you mean by horrible Everybody football? looked bad. Like every single game that I watched yesterday looked like, hey, we're just trying to figure it out as we go. It didn't look like anybody had uh, uh, it, it didn't look like there was one elite team that played yesterday. It looked like there was a bunch of guys that all play in the NFL. And uh, I've been told that that's called parody. To me, that's called a bad product. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> but I didn't turn it off. I loved every minute of it. That was the point of all of it. I loved every single minute of it. But there was a lot of bad football out there, and I think there is a lot of bad football happening right now. Well, okay. What what what, what constitutes bad football? What did you see bad? Like I I know that Brock Purdy didn't play so well. I know he didn't play so well. Right. Um, but uh, you, you know what it is. I feel like the, it's the, the Giants, say. the Jets. Oh my God, that was horrible. Now, that, was, that, was, that was a dumpster fire. That was definitely that was definitely one of those right on the lines of what you're saying right there. That was, <laughs> it was a dumpster. <laughs> I feel like there is a, and maybe it's because of right, like there's a lot more younger players now, and and coming from college is very different stuff like that, and and they go with a lot more younger players now. But there seems to be around the league to me a lack of discipline all the way around. There are these moments where I see an elite drive going to, I mean, Hey, uh, I, <laughs> Oh, now I remember why I was watching old bears games yesterday because I watched Trevor Lawrence drop back yesterday and throw an interception that I could only call a Rex Grossman interception. Like he dropped back. It looked like he did not look around. He threw it into quadruple coverage and it was picked off. Of course. Oh, come on. That's a, that could have been, that could have been a Jeff George. Interception. <laughs> All right. Jeff George would throw it to anybody. Okay. I remember that guy. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, it was like it. And there was just so many games yesterday. I think, Saints Colts was interesting, but it never was like this is like elite level football. And I just, I really about, looked around and it was like, I don't Baltimore think an elite team. What about the Baltimore game? Baltimore was up the whole time, though, pretty much. They were up. They they dominated, right? They dominated that they game. They dominated. Okay. They look good then. They look good. <sighs> yeah, I guess. But ah, not look really. At you, look at you. You like, out of the really? You've been waiting to exhale. Not like they 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 beat the Cardinals who they were supposed to be and almost choked it away like they were. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just I don't know, man. Like I I look at the end and here's the thing. I'm not gonna turn it off. I love every minute of it. Right. It it, it tells me. I say I'd have to say the NBA is here for me. And I think yesterday I realized the NFL is somewhere up here. Yes. Because yes. if you've got 13 bad episodes of a TV show out of 15. And you go, I'm not turning the show off. It's it's, it's a good show. It's a good show. It's a good show, but it's not mm -hmm. a good show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've seen that. It's, that's, hey, that's happened in history. When you, watch, when you watch the product that's in the league right now, do you feel like it's still at the same level as when you guys played? Like it's still a very high quality pr product out there? But still, I mean, look, these the the athletes are there, you know. What I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. No, there and all that stuff, you know, and and what what you know, health wise and and exercise and all that stuff. Guys are moving around. Uh, the the rules the rules are 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 a little puzzling. They're a little puzzling, you know, yeah. and and um and and I say, i.e., you know, Shiloh Sanders um, oh, um hit God. the other day. You know, and it'd be called targeting. You know, how it, dare you hit that man? <laughs> right, right. You know, and it's just it, to me, it's it's, you know, we we played this game at 100 miles an hour, and and defensive players are doing their best to play it the way you're supposed to play it. You know, um, and 
and still when that happens, somebody, you know, still people are going to get hurt. Yeah. But it doesn't justify a, a, a yellow because of it. So um, the, the things have changed. But, you know, to me, the thing that that is most glaring are the habits that I see on the football field. So these habits, if they're not if they're non aggressive habits, if they're backed up, if they're allowing receivers to to free release all the time, yeah. that's what they're being coached. Those habits are being coached. And and if that's the if that's what the, the the coaches are teaching, then therein lies part of the problem, you know. I, I don't. Is there is there a? Because I feel like with college now, and, and I haven't been a huge college fan, so correct me if I'm wrong. But I feel like with college now, they're preparing just for whatever the college style game is, versus having a pro style offense that transitions guys readily into the league. Is that something that we're seeing more now versus back in the day? Well, I, I, I uh, you know, I am, it is my humble opinion, man, but I just think that, that people are chasing money, you know, they know how fast you can, how fast you can, you can get that check by coaching and how fast you move up. All right. I go from being a linebacker coach to the DC next year or, or the co-DC coordinator and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I get that extra check. But what, how am I really impacting my players? Am I really teaching them football? Because what I'm seeing, I'm seeing spot drops from linebackers. I'm seeing them being used around and around. I'm seeing guys play uh, defenses play against a team and one receiver get the ball 22 times. I'm like, how the heck can a kid get it 22 times? Why are you not forcing them, anybody else but him? to catch the ball, you know? And so it's just a, it's simple things that bother me and it's yeah. habits that are being formed and they're formed by the coaches. And these coaches are rising up the ranks. Like yeah. in, in three years, they, they're, they're up for head coach. Yeah. I know. I, I, you know what? It, I can see that being an issue. Like it, it does feel like, like the, the game just feels like it, it at times, like, okay, we, we like, I got 11, you got 11. It feels like backyard football sometimes. And backyard football is fun in, like, broken play moments. It's some not these, fun in a full game. Yeah. Some of these names that come up, they, they talk about, you know, oh, we move on from Iberflus. So let's go get Lincoln Riley. All right, now, in, wherever <laughs> Lincoln Riley has been, wherever he's been, you tell me what, what his defense was ranked. All right, I remember Oklahoma when Oklahoma was a defensive team. I remember when Bob Stoops had all them, you know, them Roy Williams. They had all them Tommy Harris's. They had all those dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And when Lincoln Riley was there, they were Swiss cheese. All right, he's at USC, defense is Swiss cheese. Yeah. Okay, so you're asking for him to come to Chicago so we can have a Swiss cheese de defense. That's yeah. what's going to happen. And, and be able to put up 40 points in a game and lose. And lose. <laughs> and lose. <laughs> and lose. <laughs> um, you know, oh. I just, you know, I'm, I try to pay attention to the details, man. Not yeah. Because it's a trendy, hot, hot pick. You know what I mean? That's the sexy pick. Oh, man, this guy is the big name. Big names doesn't necessarily uh, 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 constitute wins. I think it goes to that and it goes to, right, especially at the NFL level, everybody wants to know what a guy is within two years. Everybody wants to know because I got to pay this guy when we get to year four. I have to be ready to give him a contract when he gets to year four. And to me, it's like, if you teach them the right way, if you develop these players the right way, which I think some teams do. I think San Francisco still does that really well. I think Buffalo does that really well. You'll pay that guy what he's worth at that moment. Yeah. And then maybe when the contract comes back around, you'll be able to pay him again because he's a much more elite player, right? Like, But it feels like everybody's just trying to rush to figure it out within the first two years. And then a lot of times, right, you're getting fool's go, right? Like if you paid Trevor Lawrence based on his performance last season – and you're seeing what you're seeing right now. And, and this is pretty much what happened, right? You're like, uh oh, uh, he, he looks he looks very different than what we saw last season. No, he didn't. He looked bad in the first eight games last year. Yeah. <laughs> he looked, he got high and seemed to figure some things out in the last eight games. Well, he lost Etienne too last year. And he, he lost, lost Etienne. Etienne last year too, he's, right? Like, and he's there. It's there. other guys yeah. that yeah. also impact the game that happens mm -hmm. on the field. Like, mm -hmm. there, there's so much that I feel is poured into. We got to figure this guy out right now. That they rush to make decisions. They they rush to get these guys to a certain point, and then if they're not there, they just throw them away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I see that. I see that. That's, but this is it's a this is a development. This yeah. is a development, you know, and and. And if we do this, you know, we do this thing right, and 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 we're smart about it, you know. Ryan Poles up there, you know, it, it'll it's not only is it going to lead to success for us, 
or the best chance of success. Yeah. But people keep their jobs. People keep their people jobs. Keep their jobs. You know what I mean? If you did, did and for <laughs> Ryan, and I'm sure Ryan is he he understands this. Listen, I cannot be swayed by what the public tells me as far as what we need for this team. You know, you have to believe in what you're doing. You know what I mean? Because this these these next two, three years are so pivotal to the future of the Bears because of our situation and our picks and what we have. Don't go for the sexy pick. Go for what we need. What yeah. we need. Because if you skip what we need, it will set us back. It will set us back. And anybody that's upset with the pick, the non-sexy pick, trust me, you will be clapping and, and clamoring for – for uh, uh, um, Ryan Poles in the future. All I all I can remember is uh, how many people were so upset at the beginning of the season that we went out and got uh, Darnell Wright over Jalen Carter. And, uh, you know, Jalen Carter has played well. I think he just got hurt uh, the other day, but he's played well for the most part this season. And he's been he would have been that three technique that we wanted to see him at, but he's on the Eagles. It makes life a lot easier when other guys are out there doing a lot of the dirty work and they say, hey, kid, you know what we need you to go do? When that hole opens up right there, you go kill that quarterback. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to open the hole for you. We're going to help you out with that. Now you go get him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like it makes life a lot easier. For me, the part that gets me excited is when we're running the football to the right and I see Darnell Wright killing a guy. Or when we're running an end around to the left and somehow Darnell Wright ends up over there and it's like, what the – He's a right tackle. How the heck did he get over there? It tells you know what it tells me. It tells me I need to, based off what I see on that right side, I need to go get that on the other side. Yeah. Now, what if I had a Darnell right on the right and the left? Oof. Okay. That and you know what I mean. So that, then it it moves back to you know I have those two guys over there. Now, what quarterback? I put put a plug a quarterback in there. Plug a quarterback in there. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna and, be fine. And, that, gonna and that's what offense. that's what like you, you have the guy that you could plug in, and you're gonna need these guys. This is what I'm trying to like. You have the 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 Tyson Bajit that you can say, Oh, Justin got hurt a couple of games. We're gonna have to throw somebody in, which is common in the modern NFL. Pat Mahomes <laughs> needed his backup, Dak Prescott needed his backup. Uh, uh, like Brock Purdy was the backup to the backup to the backup, right? Like you got to run through guys sometimes. So it, it, it's, it, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that this bears team just needs to continue to focus on the trenches. If we come out of next, uh, off season or next draft with two pieces in the trenches, uh, on both offense and defense, I'll be very excited about the, what this team is, and and we we also need to understand that we have we have bargaining chips, we have we have we have trade value, you know. So the, the if you're looking to get a new quarterback or you're looking to get a new wide receiver, whatever it is, there's abilities for us to trade trade into the following year. Yeah, you know what I mean. As we continue, we put the pieces together that whoever is going to be that skill, those skilled guys, we put the pieces together in front. And solidify that, solidify it. You know what I mean. So we're rotating, you know, uh, first and second rounders on that defensive line. We're rotating first and second rounders, and maybe a third round center on yeah. that offensive line. Now added to with Nate uh, with Nate Davis, Tevin Jenkins, two uh, first round tackles. Now everybody's like, this this team is scary. Yeah, it's scary good. And that's and that's the teams you talk about. Let's uh, you did mention records there though, and and I do want to talk about uh, Matt Eberflus is now five and twenty as a head coach of the Chicago Bears, and and I don't believe that uh, I can hold everything against him, but he's five and twenty, and we're questioning leadership. This is now the worst winning percentage of any head coach that has ever coached the Chicago Bears, which is very impressive because we've had some bad coaches here um it's development we know where we're at we know what our talent level is all right um defensively look defensively you're, you're asking a whole heck of a lot out of a, a of a coach and you don't have a pass rush all right and you leaned on offense you know right. and 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 you have more talent this year defensively than you did last year right all right so the expectation of of a win-loss record when you don't have the talent to 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 put forth is tricky. So then you say, all right, we get rid of this guy and we bring in another guy that 
was knocking on the door of getting being able to draft everybody, all this talent. You know, this is just the very first tip of the iceberg of of uh, of of this rebuild. We're just putting pieces together, right? And we're talking about his win loss record. What did we think it was going to be? <laughs> well, I knew what it was going to be last year when they went into the games and that mother was just like, hey, uh, Roquan, get out. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know I, I would say, you know, I would say, you know, with the added pieces that we do this year, this is an even bigger offseason than last year. And you yeah. know how excited everybody was last year about what, putting, the, putting the team together. Um, so – this year, I think you add in pieces because there's more picks, more tradable options. You add so you add more pieces to sit, to come along with who you have now. Then next year, next year to me is at least an eight win season. It's an eight win season, I think, for the Bears, and that's a step forward. Okay, and then we're talking 10, 11, 12 plus wins. Yeah, you know, maybe more. Then we're talking another 10, 12 uh, win season. Then we're talking another 10. And that's what we're getting. That's what I'm getting at. You know, it's, yeah. but, it, but it, it, it has to be a slow process and you have to see it developing. And it is. Well, that's that's the part, right, Loair. When I look at Flus, the question marks that we have, while, yes, there are question marks on the pass rush of this team. There's not question marks. We have the answer. There, There is no pass rush on this team, right? But doesn't that also go to the defensive-minded head coach who was in the rooms that said, get me Javon Dexter, get me Zach Pickens, and we've seen a half a sack between them. Development has to happen well, from those young guys said. for that to, to turn into. But that's not what he said. You know what I mean? He said, get me Jalen Carter, get me whoever those top guys were. Right. Couldn't get them. So we yeah, that's, that's not – there's no way that he said in the very beginning of this draft, Bring me these two guys. That's yeah, not yeah. the thing, okay? We, that's what he got. Right. All right? And they said, no, we're going to go get uh, uh, Darnell. Darnell, Darnell. Right. right. So, okay, okay. All right, well, I got it. Well, you know, and, you know, and to me, as a coach, I, you know, I, that's one area where I would be, I would be straight with everybody. I'm like, listen, we're not where we need to be talent-wise defensively. We're not. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some talent. We are, you know, getting to the quarterback is one of our issues. And as long as that becomes an issue, we, you know, it's it's going to be a problem. But we will be effort. We will have 11 hats getting to the ball. And we're going to take the ball away. And we're going to score on defense the best right. we can. We will be sound. All right. We won't be, you know what I mean? We will be sound. And we will know how offenses will attack us. All right. Now that we, well, that's one thing as a coach, I would say to the media and everybody else. But isn't that, isn't that also the concern here that, right? Like we saw that kind of in Oakland. We don't see it last week or th this week in, in with the Chargers. We saw it versus the Commanders. We didn't see it versus Minnesota, right? Like, I feel like that's the game that that I look at the coaching staff and I'm like, all right, when it, when is this when is this going to get consistent? Like, when, are, when well, is the players been, buying into your message going to stay consistent? They, well, defensively, they have progressed. They For have sure. progressed right. since, since, since Iberflus took over. They have, they have progressed on a weekly basis. And it regressed to up to the uh, uh, a week ago, where they were playing lights out. You yeah. know what I mean? They, you know, they were getting the quarterback. They were playing lights out. This week isn't indicative of a consistent play. This is just an off week. Yeah, now yeah. do it again next week. You do it again next week. Now I, it's not an off week. We're trending that way. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? But that's not the way this defense has been trending. They've been trending toward. They've been trending up. And it helps ball. when you play yeah. Brian Hoyer though. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Lance, you still got six snaps for Brian Hoyer, dog. You still got. Absolutely, no, I don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hey. Pops. No, no. <laughs> That's what your knee said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, I just, I think to me, right? Like we had the conversation on the NFL as a whole. That coaching is so important with this, and you see the differences that good coaching can make. And I'm not saying that, you know, everything has been bad with Flus this year. And the, and the part that's tough on Flus and on Getze is, right, like they're learning on the job too, and we're not going to give you the same grace that we're going to give a player. You're 5 and 20. You're 5 and 20 usually as a coach versus a player who is like, well, he's 5 and 20, but, like, everybody else around him sucked. Yeah. Everybody else around him sucking is what the coach had to work with. Yeah. 
And it, I, I just think that, right, with Flus, there's been, to me, a the principles that you've been built on have been disrespected quite a few times this season. And I haven't seen the changes come in and out that I would think a coach would make based on, hey, this is our standard. We don't go below this standard. Well, I see a bunch of guys below this standard. What, what are we doing to fix this? How do we get guys back to the standard? Mm. It's hard to argue on that one. Argue. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, right? Like, gotta have a standard. You gotta have a standard. You gotta have goals. Absolutely. You know, what I mean? you gotta have things that you're striving for. Hustle's the first word. I saw, <laughs> yep. I saw, I saw guys dying the other night. Yeah, you know I mean, so I don't know. But uh, let me ask you this: Is uh, can we can we finish it off here? Is uh, Valus Jones done? Is is this it? Are, are we finally past he, the experiment? That's like he's got some sort of get out of jail free card. Hey, yo, he, he got whose pictures off. do he got naked, bro? He got he right? got something going on here. Oh man, you know, I mean, look, I, I, you know, that's that's the decision that the Bears have to make. So, um, if if I were in charge, that decision would have been made long ago. <laughs> and um, but I, you know, I, I'm I'm also of the of the of the the cloth that. You know, we all got to go out. We got to feed our families. You know, and so, you know, I, and 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 so the the coldness, the cold business side of me, you know, says what I said about them. But at the same time, man, you know, I, I want to see everybody. As a player, want to see everybody eat in the NFL. Yeah, and and really, I was root. I've, I've been rooting for him to succeed. Right. You know, I've been rooting for him, and I hope everybody else does. So whether it's here or anybody else, everywhere else, you know, for somebody for another team, I hope he really shines. No, yeah, you. I, I think that's the weird. That is the weird part about some fans to me. Like, I want Valus to do well. I don't want him to suck because he plays for the team that I love. Mm -hmm. What he does on the field is up to him. But yeah. like, they, I feel like there is that portion of the fan base that's like, no, I want him to suck so that we can get somebody else in there. And it's like that doesn't. Like, I don't want to see that either. I want him to do well. Yeah, I, I, I want him <laughs> to suck so I can be right about what I said at work. That's what. Yeah. I, that's what it always feels like to me. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and you know, I, I I know I sometimes I can be cold in, in criticism, you know, because yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be honest at the same time, you know. But at the end of the day, I really do want all of these guys to uh, to to play well and to succeed and have fun in this NFL while you can. But honestly speaking, the, the, Yurko <laughs> said it yesterday, and it, I feel like the, the moment is too big for him. The, when yeah. the lights come on, it's it's too big for him. Mm -hmm. Like, and, yep, and it, it is age. <laughs> it is. Age. <laughs> nah, you don't get to say at his age. When I said at his age earlier this season, you was like, he's only 27. That's not that old. No, you don't get to say it at his age. This man is a second, he on his second year in the NFL. He got an AARP car coming his way talking about it at his age. Like, oh, nah, you don't get to do that. Oh, Lance, at two and six right now, what do you want to see the Bears team do? Do you want to continue to see them go out there and try and put their best foot forward? Or Always. are you going uh, Always. time to go get draft capital? Always. You always go and put your best foot forward. You don't go out there. Don't go out there and be embarrassed. Don't do that. That's not the way to do it. I would never coach that way. Yeah. Um, and as a player, you should have too much pride to let anybody just just uh, 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 roll over you or steamroll over you or throw you out of the way. All right. Mm -mm. Your mama's all. Your mama's raised you better. Dang. <laughs> They played the mama card. <laughs> Yo, mama's watching. We're two and six. Mm -hmm. Let's like, don't look. tell mama. Let's, mama, look away. Mm -hmm. Look away, mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always say that. You know when people say stuff, you know, like, did I let this happen? I'm like, my mom watches this. Yeah. You know what I mean? My mom watches. Like, you guys, you, are you kidding me? Yeah. Is, are, there, are there scripts? You know, are, there, are, you, are games scripted? I had some of my, my freshmen ask me, are games scripted? I'm like, listen, man. I said, I've been, I said, my mom's been coming to my game since I was a little boy. Do you think I'm going to go along with any script that allows the team that I'm playing to, to score on me? Come on, guys. <laughs> my, my favorite one was Brady. He said, when they asked him what game scripted, he said, you think I would have let Eli Manning beat me twice? Right. <laughs> right. Come that on. was the best one I had heard. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was the best one that I had heard about. Is the case? He said, "Do you think I would have let Eli Manning beat me twice?" It was like, "Dang, I never, I never thought about that." Like it, he did, like mess up your whole perfect season. And Nick Foles. Nick right. Foles is the one that gets it. I think he really hate Nick. 
You know what I mean? I think he really, he got real hate for Nick in his heart. That is what it is, though. Very but happy. hey, man, that's another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love. Uh, we got a long way to go, Lance, and it uh, doesn't seem like it's getting better anytime soon. But we'll see what this uh, team brings next week on Sunday at noon when uh, we got the Saints marching in. Or we're marching to the Saints, I guess. We're going to it. Don't be discouraged, uh, Chicago fans. Don't be discouraged, all right? This is a process that's going to take a while, all right? We got to put all the right ingredients in now, all right? And the right ingredients doesn't mean going to another cupboard and getting a whole another set of ingredients. No, we have it here. Let's just keep sprinkling. See, the, the problem is we got the, you know, you know, our black folks, with black folks, the ingredients don't never go bad. So we sitting here banging the ingredients on the table, I trying to get some of that seasoning bacon. loose. You got to you gotta loosen up some of that seasoning real quick and get it. It's, it's taking a little bit longer than what I like, Lance. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I got to get the lemon pepper loose. Right, right. So that I can pour it in. I don't know. It's tough out here, man. I uh, appreciate you guys for showing love. As always, hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Drop a bird, Don. Y'all stay safe out there. Chicago Bears podcast. Peace.